in the firewalls, you can create VLAN interfaces. And the main purpose for doing that is if you have more than one firewall interfaces, then you have physical interfaces. Then you can create a trunk which contains many tagged VLANs on the same physical interface. And there is a limitation in some firewalls because of the licenses. For example, in this 5506, you can only create five VLANs. So you need to think about the licensing when you configure the VLANs. Let's show you how you configure a sub-interface, how you create the trunk and the sub-interfaces. This is a firewall without any configuration. It looks like this. Let's say that we connect the interface gigabit 1 slash 2, the physical interface, to a switch, and the other end of the switch is configured as a trunk. That's a requirement for configuring trunks, that both ends are running trunk, and they run the protocol 802.1q. And let's say that we have two VLANs on that trunk. So let's create two VLANs. First of all, we need to do no shot on the interface, on the physical interface. Int gigs 1 slash 2, no shot. We create the sub interfaces by going into the physical interface and write a dot and a number after that. Dot 100, for example. So that creates a sub-interface, and that's the way you create sub-interfaces in Cisco routers as well. By doing that, you have created a sub-interface under the physical interface, and on that sub-interface you can create name if, inside, outside, security level, zero, IP address, one, two, three, four, and so on. And as you see, I got an error message saying that I must define the VLAN ID. And it's a bit confusing because I just entered dot .100, but the dot .100 is only an internal name of the interface. I also need to add a command VLAN and a number. In most situations, I use the same number here as I use after the dot in the interface name, like that. I create another one. I create dot .200, name if inside, security level 100, IP address 10.0.0.1, and VLAN 200. Let's have a look at the configuration, how it looks like. I have the physical interface that I have done no shut on, and I have not created a name if security level and IP address commands on the main interface. In this situation, I don't need that. If you do that, what will happen is that this interface will be for the untagged traffic on the trunk, if you have a native VLAN in the other end of the trunk. For example, the default VLAN 1, then that is the untagged traffic on the trunk, and that is where you configure the name of security level and IP address as well. In this case, I assume that I have a switch port in the other end of the cable that is a trunk that only have two VLANs, VLAN 101 and VLAN 200, and they are configured like this. So the physical interface, gig 1 slash 2, is connected to a switch that is configured as a trunk. And typically, this trunk configuration on the port of the switch in the other end of the cable can look something like this. The interface name, switch port mode trunk, switch port trunk allowed VLAN 100, 200. So it's a trunk that carries tagged traffic. Actually, in some switches, you also need to set the switch port trunk encapsulation dot 1q. That is not available on all switches, but in some switches, to enforce the dot one q protocol. And you configure it as a trunk, and you filter the trunk to only carry VLAN 100 and 200. And those VLANs need to be created in the switch as well. So you can repeat these commands to create any number of firewall interfaces that the licensing supports to create DM sets and so on. You can also run an Ether channel. Ether channel is a way to load share traffic on multiple connections, on multiple cables. And I cannot do that in the virtual firewall, and I cannot do that in the 5506 I have available here. So I cannot show it to you. But if you create a port channel, an Ether channel in the switch end, you can bundle together more than one physical interface to a logical interface that is an Ether channel. And if you combine Ether channel with trunks, 
you can use the full bandwidth or at least most of the bandwidth of the physical connections and you don't have to mess with the physical connections when you add more VLAN interfaces or more firewall interfaces to the firewall. And it's a good way for you to build a scalable firewall solution to combine trunks with ether channels.